Garage update. Had Todd fun. The bench is out. Everything's taped up and ready to spray. Uh, we'll take the AC run out of the wall real quick when we get there. And uh, we had a really bad leak in our roof about five years ago. And I'm cutting a patch. We actually had the roof completely redone. But this had a hole in it for the longest time. And now my son and I were cutting that. And, and I'll go ahead and sheetrock all that back in before we start painting. Well, I got a couple of, couple of layers of patch on that hole. I got to do the, uh, the texturing now and, and on to paint. And another update I made when in the garage is I have three light bulbs. Actually, the garage only had two light bulbs. I added a third years ago. And that was all the lights that I had in the shop until I got all these overhead fluorescents. We'll see over here. I had, uh, well, one bulb there and one bulb there, but I have essentially a circle of, of fluorescents there, all T8s. And they put those in a long time ago. The problem was, is that this switch over here, you come in the garage, that just turned on the little light bulbs and it was pretty dark. And because I added these overheads um, first, I had a switch over here, and I had to come all the way over here, and coming out of these ports I had conduit where I had a switch here. I just changed this out to an outlet, I took that conduit out, which you can kind of see there where the paint was. Um, yeah, get over here. So now, what used to go over to that switch, now I routed around this way and under the plastic. And so now those lights on the other side get its power from here. This light gets its power from this light, which used to come down this wall and used to come through here and around and then there was a switch here that turned on the bench lights. I changed this to an outlet now because, and I pulled all those wires out of the wall, and these lights, this one is essentially getting its power from this bulb. That means I turn on one switch now and all my garage lights come on. So a few days have passed. Uh, the gun is doing really good. I'm still painting away. Uh, you, one thing I've learned really well is you don't go slow. You keep moving. Um, you do overlap. You do like a overlap high, overlap low that is. So that you're always overlapping half of your spray, but that's what the instructions say. That works well, but you gotta keep moving. And I learned that when I'm painting shelves. Even when you're painting shelves, keep moving, because it's putting down paint fast. Uh, there's the ceiling up there, that hole that you saw earlier. Um, it's got the knockdown and a couple coats of paint. Looks like it wasn't even there now. But this side of the garage is still not painted, but I'm using the space to paint all the shelves and all my uh, uh, benches. I have several benches. This is a bench, a tool bench. You've seen it in some videos. Um, Normally I don't paint t workbench tops because it, you know you get chemicals and stuff on it and it'll just eat it just destroys the paint and makes it terrible right away. But I have a plan. I'm going to put down a two-part uh, clear coat like you would for a car. In fact, it's the same thing you put down on a car. I'm figuring if I put a, about four coats of that on here, it'll be pretty much impervious to many of the greases and, and cleaners I use and it'll stay white. If you saw in an earlier video, I said I was putting a backsplash um, behind this where the where the sink is going to be. I taped that all off and I put four coats of automotive clear coat and this wall now is a uh, it doesn't matter how dirty it gets it's going to wash up it's just as slick as glass. Clear coating is done. Uh, did four, quart, four coats of automotive clear coat on this bench. This bench has been with me for about 20 years now and uh, uh, I've been very happy with it, but as you can see, it did get some bleed through from some stains that were on the bench. But uh, uh, I did use a, uh, a stain barrier primer before I did the white painting, and, and then of course in the four coats of clear coat. It'll get beat up again, but if I get another 20 years out of it, it's still a great investment. I love drilling and banging and chopping on it, so it's going to look ugly soon enough. This is what I used for all the clear coating. I did all of my shelves with a clear coat. That way they'll just be easier to keep the paint clean because I put greasy parts and I put tools on them and then that will look cleaner. So what I used is I used this Acme 
uh, Finish One product, uh, FC720 and uh, FH612. It's a four to one mixture. This is the clear coat, this is the hardener. Um, and I just use a cheap Harbor Freight gun, like a $15 gun. It, uh, it says 40 PSI on it you need um, for, your, uh, um, for your gun, but I actually found that setting my compressor to about 70 P PSI made a much better spray pattern. You do have to get the gun adjusted correctly, so you have to have something to test on. Uh, but the manual does tell you how to adjust the gun. You follow the instructions, it does work fine. Uh, but you've got to clean this up really good when you're done. Totally strip it down and clean it up. And you clean everything up with just a, a lacquer thinner, and it cleans up things really, really well. Uh, make sure you wear good respiration when you use one of these, whether you're indoor or out, it doesn't matter. You get such a, you don't want to breathe any of that clear coat in. So that's about it for the updates this week. Uh, next week it'll be painting and, and, and updates on how the floor is going. Thanks for joining.